to another week of Lead the Way. We are going to be following God all around the Bible and the world to learn more about the Old Testament, which includes everything before the life of Jesus. This week, we are going to be looking at the life of Abraham and the plans that God had for his life. And let me tell you, his plan was so big that it outnumbered the stars in the sky. All right, Kendall, before we learn all about this, I think it's time that we play a game. Today's game is called, Where Are We? We are gonna give you three fun facts and you have to guess where in the world these things happened. And if you aren't well-traveled pilots like us, no need to worry. We are going to give you three answer choices to help you narrow it down. Let's play. Round one. This country has more skyscrapers than any other city in the world. Hmm. Invented the word ketchup and is known as the home of the panda. Do you think this is Canada, Brazil, or China? This is China. Round two. This place has the largest library in the world, the biggest tea drinkers in the world, and invented soccer. Do you think this is the United Kingdom, Italy, or Mexico? This is the United Kingdom. Round three. This place has the biggest coral reef in the world, is the second driest continent, and is home to the kangaroo. Do you think this is the US, Australia, or France? This is Australia. Round four. This place only has one desert, invented the roller skates, and has more than 2,800 hockey rinks. Do you think this is Spain, Russia, or Canada? Of course it's Canada. Round five, our final round. This place is the only country in the world that has five climate zones, the most volcanic country on the planet, and McDonald's was invented here. Is this the US, Egypt, or France? This is the USA. Now that we have learned about many different places, it's time to learn more about creation and what happened to it. Let's go ahead and watch our Bible story video. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Genesis, chapters 12 to 21. Abram lived in Haran with his wife Sarai and his nephew Lot. His flocks of sheep provided some of the fuzziest wool in the land, and his goats were the smartest. What's one plus one? That's some mad math skills. <laughs> Though Abram had many herders and servants and all the good things that he could want, he still sometimes had trouble sleeping at night. We have no children. What do all these other things matter? Sarai slept deeply, but Abram crept out of the tent. Hmm, maybe some fresh air will help. He pulled his cloak tightly against the chilly night air, and Abram headed briskly up the hillside. The soft flap of his sandal seemed like the only sound in the world until... Abram. Who's there? Abram turned to his right and there was no one there, but he turned to his left and saw only... Abram. Abram spun around. Vast darkness stretched all around him while stars wheeled above. It seemed as if the earth was spinning beneath him. There's no one. Must be... Is it God? The people of Haran worshipped many false gods which they thought were real, but Abram knew this was different. Someone different. 
Leave your country and your people. Leave your father's family. Go to the land I will show you. But this is my home. I'm already 75 years old. Abram, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing to others. The words of the Lord were staggering. Though Abram had no children now, God was promising him enough kids and grandkids to fill an entire country. You do realize that Sarai, that both of us, we're getting too old to have kids. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. Wow, God, I don't know what to say. I mean, except, well, I'll go. Abram walked the hills all night, returning home at the first light of dawn, rousing the rest of the households from their beds. We have to pack. Get the herds ready. Road trip. <laughs> Abram's wife, Sarai, rubbed the sleep from her eyes. Oh, where are we going? For how long? I don't know. You don't know where or how long? Both. Oh, Abram's nephew Lot yawned. <sighs> if this is all a joke, I'm going back to bed. No, no, God spoke to me. A God? Which God? The one true God. He wouldn't tell us to do something that wouldn't turn out well, right? But surely everyone would listen to God if that were true. Please trust me. Trust the one true God. Oh, and God said we're going to have kids and grandkids. What? Lots of them. This one true God does realize I'm 65, right? It wasn't an easy job preparing dozens of people and hundreds of animals for a one-way trip to who knows where. But at last, finally, the family set out on the trail. In fact, Abram and his family walked for hundreds of miles on foot until they reached the land that God spoke of. This land, it's even more beautiful than Haran. But even though Abram had done what God told him, there was still no child for years and years. Once again, God spoke. Look up, Abram. I will give you all of the land that you see. I will give it to you and your children after you forever. Thank you, Lord. But the years continued to pass, and though Abram continued to follow God, God's promise, well, it seemed just as far away as ever, especially for Sarai. Children, Abram, are you sure this one true God has really promised a child? Look how old I am. During another sleepless night, Abram slipped out of the tent. Abram, do not be afraid. Look up at the sky. Abram craned his head back. Above him, stars filled the deep blue dome of the sky. Points of light shone in thick layers stretching deeper and deeper into space. Oh, count the stars if you can. There are way too many. That's how many children you have. God even changed Abram's name to Abraham, which means father of many, and Sarai to Sarah, which means princess. At last, one day, the Lord appeared with two travelers under the large trees by Abraham's tent. Abraham rushed to honor their guests. Together, he and Sarah made a tasty pot roast and some crusty bread. Ah, I have some more butter. Sarah's famous for her barley bread. Where is your wife? Just over there in the tent. I will return this time next year. Sarah will have a son. Inside the tent, Sarah overheard these words and gasped. A baby? That promise again? I'm almost 90 now. She imagined trying to chase a baby around the tent. <laughs> the thought was so ridiculous that she laughed out loud and the men heard her. Why did Sarah laugh? Is anything too hard for me? Sarah tugged aside the wall of the tent, face flaming. I, I didn't laugh. Yes, you did. Even though Abraham and Sarah were old enough to be great-great-grandparents, Sarah did have a baby exactly a year later. This little boy is impossible, <laughs> but somehow he's here anyway, just like God promised. God's got a sense of humor. Uh, that's it. We'll call our son Isaac. Laughter. Yes, God has given us laughter. Everyone who hears about this will laugh. 
For 25 years, Abraham followed and trusted God, even though he had no idea how God would fulfill his amazing, impossible promise. But in the end, every one of God's words came true, bringing Abraham and Sarah deep, deep joy. In the beginning, God created a magnificent paradise and everything was good. When people broke God's rule, the world was broken. People were separated from God, but not forever. God promised to show those who were lost that he would always love them. God called Abraham to leave everything and follow him, even though he didn't know what to expect. Abraham trusted God because he knew that God's plan was unbreakable. That's the thing about plans. When you and I make a plan, we don't always keep them. We get busy, we forget, Sometimes things happen that are out of our control, but when God makes a plan, it always happens. That reminds me of our bottom line for today. We can follow God because He has a plan. Can you say that with me? We, we can, can follow, follow God, God because, because He has, has a plan. plan. One more time. We, we can, can follow God, God because, because He has a plan. plan. Let's pray. God, you are so amazing. You have had a plan since the beginning of time. You planned for Abraham's family to grow, you planned for Jesus to come into this world, and you planned promises for our lives too. I ask that you help us trust the plans you have for our lives and that we have the confidence to share your plans with others. We love you and ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. That's all we have today. Bye, Grace Kids.